Our processional hymn is, What Wondrous Love Is This? You're invited to sing with your mask on. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Blessed be our God. This is the night that Christ, the Son of Man, gathered with his disciples 
in the upper room. This is the night that Christ our Lord and Master took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, calling us to love one another as he has loved us. This is the night that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his perfect sacrifice. This is the night that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose most dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it in thankful remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for God's reading of God's word. A reading from Exodus, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some, blood of the, some of the blood and put it on the two doorsteps and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. In this manner, you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff on your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast, and of all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 78, beginning at verse 15. We will read the psalm responsively. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused water to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their hearts by demanding the food that they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? 
He struck the rock so that the water gushed out and streams overflow. Can he also give bread and provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger rose against Israel. Because they did not believe in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. And he rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Man ate of the bread of the angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in heaven, and by his power he let out the south wind. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is from Luke's gospel, chapter 22. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the uh, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it would be who was going to do this? A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, And those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves." The Gospel of the Lord. May we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
on Monday, Thursday, there are several things we could focus on. We could focus on the washing of the disciples' feet by Jesus. We could look at the new commandment that Jesus gave his followers to love one another. We could focus on the argument that we see here in Luke as to who's the greatest among the disciples. We could look at the betrayal by Judas. We could look at the arrest of Jesus. What I'd like to focus on at this time are the words that Jesus gave us when he said, this is my body given for you, and this is my blood. I want to look at these familiar words that you, uh, that you and I hear when we celebrate Holy Communion. And we'll look at the context of these words in the Passover ceremony that Jesus was celebrating in that upper room. And we'll see how Jesus shifted the Passover celebration and the symbolism to commemorate his actions on the cross by looking at what Jesus says. And then finally, we'll look at the, the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. And we'll look at the promises that God makes in those words and how we're to receive the promises of God in faith. Well, first, Jesus places his words in the upper room within the context of the annual Passover meal, a meal that was being replicated throughout Jerusalem and throughout the Holy Land on that Thursday. Verse 14 of Luke, And when the hour came, Jesus reclined at table, and the apostles with him, and he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And we know much more than the disciples did, what that suffering entails. The arrest of Jesus, the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, the bogus trial before Pilate, and before the Sanhedrin, and then Pilate after that, the scourging after the guilty verdict was imposed, the journey of Jesus to Golgotha for his crucifixion and the agonizing death that he endured. But knowing that he would suffer did not preclude Jesus, didn't prevent him from eagerly desiring and anticipating being with his disciples because he knew the importance of what he was about to do and what he was about to say. The purpose of the Passover meal was to remember the past, as we see in the account from Exodus. Be thankful for the present and look forward to the future. The past event remembered was God's miraculous deliverance of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. The presider at the Passover meal would take the unleavened bread and say, this is the bread of affliction which our fathers ate in the wilderness. It wasn't the actual bread, but it represented what God had done in delivering God's people from Egyptian slavery. What we find is how Jesus shifts the Passover symbolism to commemorate his actions on the cross. Jesus makes himself the focus of the Passover meal. And he took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He takes the Passover words, this is the bread of affliction, and makes it this my body given for you. 
He anticipates his body being given in our place on the cross. He dies the death that we deserve to die. And then what he, he gives for his followers then and now is his very self, his flesh to feed on him. The disciples are to be continually nourished by Jesus. That's the idea. And this is what is being instituted. And similarly, Jesus takes the Passover context of the, the cup and the wine and changes it to focusing on what he is to achieve on the cross. And during Passover, there are four cups of wine which are passed around to recall the four promises found in Exodus chapter 6, where God says, I will bring you out. I will free you. I will redeem you. I will take you for my own people, and I will be your God. These are the promises found in the Passover meal that God gave to his people. What Jesus does is he changes it and says this, that this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. What is this new covenant? Well, the Old Testament had several covenants binding God to humankind. But in particular, what Jesus is meaning here is that there will be a new covenant established between God and humanity that will be achieved on the cross itself. That he will be the sacrificial offering to atone for our sins. And through faith in what he has achieved, we too have forgiveness of sins. And in a parallel account of what Jesus says in the Last Supper, he says that this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins, making a direct linkage between the new covenant and the fact that through Christ we have forgiveness of sins. We have a clean slate. We have a clear conscience before God because of what Christ has achieved for us through his atoning sacrifice. Because God knew that the old covenant that was established with Moses was insufficient to deal with the problem of indwelling sin. The old covenant represented by the Ten Commandments showed God's holy standard, but we fall so short of that because there's no way, humanly speaking, we can keep God's perfect law. A new covenant was necessary to make us right with God. That's why God has the prophet Jeremiah record this declaration. This is the covenant, the new covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Jesus is the new Moses. He is the one who puts the new covenant in the hearts of people by means of the Holy Spirit. God realizes that there's this greater need. There's a greater need in this new covenant than freedom from the captivity of human bondage that the Israelites experienced. Yes, they gained their freedom, but only for a time. God envisaged a day when humanity itself would be free from the bondage of sin and death and not having to live with a perpetually guilty conscience. Through Christ, there is an, the new covenant that fulfills the promises from Exodus to free God's people, redeem them, and to be their God. 
Jesus shifts the Passover imagery to show how his actions on the cross will pay the penalty for sin and by his dying establishes a new covenant between God and humanity to bring the forgiveness that we need and peace with God. Finally, these words that Jesus says at the Last Supper are to be remembered continually. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. He establishes this act in the context of a communal meal of God's people because Jesus sees the need to bind his people to himself. He sees the need we have for God. And this is why what he has done needs to be continually remembered. And I like what Archbishop Thomas Cranmer said so many years ago, almost 500 years ago, as we receive the bread and wine, to take them in remembrance that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Faith is crucial in receiving Christ's body and blood in the sacrament as it is critical to receive any of God's promises. Thanksgiving is the response. And faith in God comes by knowing him. As is in the case of knowing any person, knowing God is gained by hearing God speak to us through his word. And faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. St. Paul says, when we hear the words of Jesus at the Last Supper or during the communion service, his words contain the promise that the sacrament is Christ himself. Following a line of thinking that comes to us from Martin Luther, when you hear the words, this is my body given for you, you hear the priest, but they aren't his words. They are the words of Jesus. In those words, there is the promise, the promise of Jesus who says, this is my body given for you. And when you hear given for you, it means me. Christ was given for me. It's a promise to receive Christ himself because it is God's promise made to me. And God does not lie. The bread and the wine become the body and blood of Jesus because this is what Jesus says happens to the bread and wine. We receive Christ in the sacrament by faith in Christ's promise. This is my body and this is my blood. And the good news for us is that receiving the sacrament doesn't depend on our worthiness. No one is worthy, really. We don't have to be in a state of grace to receive the sacrament. We need to believe the promise of Christ that this is his body given for you and for me. And we receive by faith in Christ and by what he says. And likewise, we look at this new covenant that is in Christ's blood. It's poured out for you, given for you, done for you. We looked at the Passover context of the words of Jesus. We see how Jesus shifts the Passover imagery to commemorate his actions on the cross, what he was going to achieve the following day. We've looked at these words that Jesus gave at the Last Supper. And finally, we looked at the sacrament and what it means when we receive it in faith. In the sacrament, we receive what Jesus promises, Christ himself in the bread and the wine. The supper we celebrate and remember this evening is Christ's gift to us. Not only is the supper a gift, not only is the sacrament of Christ's body and blood a gift, what we are reminded never to lose sight of is that Jesus is the world's greatest gift. He is the one 
who was born in the manger for you and for me and came to our world to be crucified. The story doesn't end on Good Friday. We know on the following Sunday that Jesus is alive. But tonight we focus on the words of Christ establishing this special meal for God's people. Jesus is the focus of the meal. The sacrament is a tangible reminder that the gift of his body and blood mean we are forgiven and free to live with him. We're free to live for him until we go to be with him when we physically die or when Christ returns. Amen. We'll now have the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants Foley, our Archbishop, Stephen, our bishop, Pete, our priest, and Bill, our deacon, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world, and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for our missionaries, especially Church of Our Lord, Kempton Jackson, and Kairos. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, we ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially John, Hope, Martha, Joseph, Beth, Cynthia, Luke, and others we now name before you. Lord, in your mercy, we remember before you all your servants who have departed this life 
in your faith and fear that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of all your saints that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and offenses which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good evening. Please be seated. In a few moments, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. And then we'll have a post-communion prayer. And then after that, we're going to have a special ceremony called the stripping of the altar. Well, because of COVID, we actually have two altars. We have a uh, lower altar. We have one here as well. And so what we'll be doing is removing uh, items from the communion tables, and then uh, we will uh, also, there's a table behind here, the credence table, we'll remove everything from there as well, and then uh, we have a, a ceremonial washing of the altars, and that's uh, going to be taking place, and we do that uh, largely in silence, and then at the end, uh, when all of that is complete, uh, Deacon Bill and I will exit, there will be no uh, dismissal, there's no blessing, we just leave, and then we all leave in, in relative silence. You, you, can, you can talk a bit, I mean, it's okay, but uh, the idea is that we leave in silence as a preparation for Good Friday uh, tomorrow, which uh, is at uh, 5 o'clock here at Christ the King. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Things come of thee, O God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and on the night before he suffered, he instituted these holy mysteries that we, receiving the benefits of his passion and resurrection, might be partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who ever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross of our redemption. He made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts the memorial your son commanded us to make, 
remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may wordly receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for you, the people of God.
God. We thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.